Okay, here we have the Marmot, Marmot Fortress UL2 person tent. Um, I just got this yesterday. It's supposed to be, sorry for the traffic noise. Uh, that's just the way it is here. Um, it's supposed to be four pounds, three and a half ounces. Uh, I didn't actually throw it on the scale, but I'm, I'm sure that's pretty much correct. Um, it is a two-person tent. It's a two-pole tent, you know, kind of a traditional uh, crossover deal with another single pole that goes across the top to create more headroom. Um, it comes with some guy lines. It's actually one big line that you get, and you have to cut it. And so I cut this one into four pieces to have four um, guy outlines because they actually give you four of these plastic things. So I figured they, the reason I bring up this four instead of some other numbers because they have a couple other tie out points. There's one here and there's one here and same on the other side. So there's really, in a sense, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight that you could do all told. Uh, but I'm just doing four. It's it's pretty stout, you know. I mean, uh, if the weather was much worse, it's a pretty lightweight tent, you know. So um, if the weather gets really bad, I'd bring a a more durable tent. But it's certainly not a summer tent. It's a winter tent. It's got a full um, fabric canopy underneath the fly. Um, it's got a vent right here. You know, kind of your traditional uh, stubby thing. I'll show you that from the inside. And there's also a vent down here that I'll show you from the inside. So there's really um, just two vents except for the doors, which I'll be showing you in a minute too. Is it, there's two doors, a uh, vestibule on each side. This vestibule is smaller than the other one. So this is really the, you know, if you're going to use it as a single person tent, this is probably the door you wouldn't use. Uh, this tent is is wider at this end and narrower at this end. This is the foot end of the tent, and this is why they don't have a vent here. This is where the this would face the wind, so it's narrower, more narrow, and um, doesn't have any venting over here. So you'll uh, have you won't have uh, spin drift blowing in. Theoretically, it also orientates the doors. You know, if the wind is blowing this direction, obviously that's preferable in this case than having the wind blow this direction. It would catch this, you know, and kind of balloon it up. So it's really designed for this end to face into the wind, which is, a, I think, a good idea. Um, you know, obviously you have to have an idea of the general wind direction. Um, to accomplish that. Uh, so let's go inside. Well, one other thing about out here, this is really cool, I think, the way they attach things here. The fly comes down and clips in here with a, you know, a clip. But then there's another attachment point right here that comes down and, and clips in here. And then this thing goes to the stake and there's an adjustment cord here to tie, you know, and you can adjust this length and this. So there's three length adjustments there. So you can really, you know, it's a real secure thing given the weight of these fabrics. I, I, they don't give the weight of the fabric in their website. And I kind of looked around and couldn't find it. But I tell you, it's, um, <clears throat> I think it's perfect for this tent. I mean, considering it's a two pole tent, um, it's not designed for hurricane force winds so uh, I'd say the fabrics are like the floor I think is um, I'm gonna I don't know I I'd say 30 and the, the uh, fly I'd say you know to me they actually this might be 20 on the body but this feels like 30 and the floor feels like 30 um, it's kind of mid you know it's not ultra light and it's not heavy. Uh, it's very middle, which I think is very appropriate for this tent. Uh, 
So there's a little Marmot logo there. Um, oh, and another thing I wanted to mention while I'm out here, well, it's, of course, it's got the dual zipper thing going on, you know, so you can, uh, you could vent out the top of here if you wanted to a little bit. Also, these tiebacks for the doors are just fabulous. This cord here is elastic. And it's just such a brilliant idea. Look at this. Stretches. So when you're going, you know, like I thought the Big Agnes one was good. The, one of the most recent tints I reviewed, but this one is better. Uh, this is the best I've ever seen having elastic here. It's so cool. And one thing I like about this is how taut it gets when you do clip it back. You notice there's really not much, uh, you know, if you're in a wind situation, you can open this and it's really not going to be problematic. Uh, let's go inside. So, uh, here's the vent on the bottom. It has a zipper and another zipper over there. Uh, and there is a bug netting there. I'm not sure if you can see it. And there's the outside. So there's a vent there. And of course this vent here, and this has a little bug netting that's zipperable. Actually, no, that's not, I'm sorry, that's not a bug netting. That's just fabric, you know, so you can close it. There is no netting up here, right? None at all. It just goes outside. And that's pretty common, you know, with four season tents. Uh, the netting kind of reduces the airflow, and usually when you're using this up in the mountains, um, you're not going to have bugs because it's too cold. This tent is really designed to be used in cold weather, uh, so bugs aren't usually an issue. Uh, so and then, and then here's the other door here. I can't hardly get it in the frame, but it's you can see it zips from here all the way around to here so it well and I'll, I'll open it in a sec but then there's this uh, as well another one of those elastic uh, deals there and this is mesh right here so of course this zips up closed right now this is open I can see into the vestibule and I'll just open the door real quick for you uh, I'll show you how big this door and all the doors so far seem to be one handle one handle hand a bowl you know, you can use one hand to open the doors and the zippers on the fly. You can use one hand to do those. It's really awesome. Really well thought out. Uh, well, there's another tie out point there. So there's kind of tie out points everywhere, you know, lots of them. So you really could buckle this thing down. But again, I, I don't think it's, I think at a certain point, you're just wasting your time. Um, so this is a very large door here. And then this other door is different than the door we just looked at because I'll show you, I'll close it up. Oh, I said you could one hand it and there I am stuck. Not being able to one hand it. Uh, well, kind of one handed it. Okay, so here's the door closed, full fabric. But the thing is, if I open it, the, uh, the vent aspect of the door, um, this is like a hundred percent vent or mesh there. This whole door is mesh. Whereas on this one, when I had the door zipped up, it was only like the top third of the door. Or so it was mesh. So effectively you have four vents, the venting on this door, the full venting on this door, the little vent up top and the vent down by where your head goes. This is the head end of the tent. This is the wider end of the tent. It's about 52 inches wide at this end, so you could put two 25-inch pads, except for uh, this end is only 48 inches, I think. So, you know, if you put two 25-inch pads in, you're short two inches on this end. But I think usually the pads are shorter than the tent. You know, they're usually like 78 in the tents are 88 so if you put that 10 extra inches of blank space at this end the tent's going to get just a smidge wider i think you could probably fit two 25 inch pads in here just barely um, 
there's no vents or anything on this wall because that's the wall where, that exposes to the wind. And then pockets wise, uh, there's a pocket right there with the tag on it, a pocket right there with the tag on it, a little pocket there, and a little pocket there. These pockets are really small. I'm not really sure what you'd do with those. I mean, I guess you could set your phone in it if it's like, you know, you're gonna do a little, watch a movie, but um, just four little pockets, you know, not a lot of pockets. It has, the, of course, the little hangers around the top for a gear uh, loft, uh, which I never do. Um, so let's step back out. And uh, any final thoughts? Let's see. I'll close this up, show you how the zipper works out here. I can undo this single handedly, and I can zip this down single handedly, of course. And I'll show you. I just pulled that all the way down to the very end. And then, so if you come up to it single handed, no problem. Down, up, down, up. No problem. The, a great adjustment uh, thing there. Really, you know, I love, I like these uh, kinds of straps. My my big Agnes Summer tin, of course, has uh, more like a para, you know, little small diameter paracord, which is appropriate for a summer tent. But for this tent, which is really kind of more a winter tent, I think these are a lot more durable looking. Uh, so... Uh, that I love I like those uh, so that's it oh another a couple other things um, the tent is asymmetrical wider at this end and skinnier at the other end so the um, fly has to be pitched with the vent on this end that puts the larger vestibule on this side and the smaller one on the other side uh, so it is they say it's color-coded in the instructions and it is color-coded in a sense um, this red see that the two red tags there that's your color coding right there and then there's two red tags on that corner and everything else is gray so the only color coding is two tags here and two tags there and that's it there's no color coding for the poles the poles are all silver um, and the reason is and I tested this to make sure, but you can totally flip the poles around. Even though the tent is not asymmetrical, the poles work either way. So it's really kind of foolproof, other than making sure you get the little red tabs and red tabs. If you've got the little red tabs here and the little red tabs there, it's gonna be correct. So that's pretty cool. Um, and that is important, I think, you know, to understand. Uh, so that's probably it. Marmot Fortress two person ultralight. They have a uh, oh, I got this. It's normally $420. Um, it was on sale, I got it for $300, like $295 or something from Backcountry, uh, which I think is just an incredible price for a tent of this quality. I really see a lot of quality in this tent. It's a polyester uh, fly, which I think is cool because nylon um, stretches more. So this is the first um, time I've set this tent up. So I'm going to do another video after I've used it some. But my hope is that uh, the polyester fly will not have as much uh, stretching when or if it gets moist. Of course, with mountaineering tents, they shouldn't really be getting too wet because if it precipitates, hopefully it's snowing. Um, but yeah, $300 for this tent, I just think is such an incredible price um, off, off of $420. I was going to say they have another version of this tent that's heavier. I think it's a... I'm to this one's four pounds, three ounces. I think the other one is, I'm totally guessing here, somewhere in the ballpark is six pounds, five or six pounds, maybe five and a half pounds. And it's just the Fortress, it's not the UL. Um, it looks the same as this in the pictures. Um, and I'm sure it's a great tent. You know, it's still the same pole design, so it's not gonna be a whole lot more sturdy, although it might have larger diameter poles. So, you know, they don't advertise the pole diameter either. So we don't know the pole diameter, we don't know the fabric weight, uh, 
and uh, but I think I would guess these poles are around nine millimeters. You know, they're not going to be the real heavy ones, uh, and maybe the ones on the other one, the heavier one, is uh, ten millimeters, and that would make it more strong in the wind. So, if, you know, that's something to look at. Uh, that tent retails, I think, around three hundred, but it is currently on sale for around two hundred, which is a real bargain as well. Both of these are really bargain tents for such a high quality tent uh, okay i think that is all of my thoughts oh the stakes i keep there's so many things to talk about the little stakes that came with these somebody mentioned in a review that they thought these stakes were really small and i agree uh, these which is fine with me because of course i'm not going to be using wood uh, dirt stakes in the snow so these stakes may very well get used on another tent but these stakes are about eight grams. I mean, I weighed them. They are eight grams. This is the lightest aluminum stake I've ever owned, other than some that I made myself that were really dumb. Um, these seem like they're kind of reasonable, but they do feel fragile. Like, if you were pounding this with a rock, I think it could just bend over. Uh, so you'd have to be kind of... I mean, I did pound it with this cement block, but I was being, you know, this ground is not real hard, so it wasn't that big a deal. But um, so it comes with six of these stakes, which is not enough. Uh, it's enough to stake it out without guidelines, but not if you're going to do guidelines. Because if you don't do guidelines, it basically does take six stakes. It has uh, one for each vestibule. And then, um, let's see, here's how I do that. One for each vestibule and one for each corner, you know, that's six. And then with the way I have it guide out now, that's seven, eight, nine, ten in total. And of course, in I'm going to be up in the snow with this thing. So I'm going to be using some kind of snow stakes. I, traditionally, I use um, just pieces of wood. Actually, I use uh, construction shims that are you can buy at the hardware store. Like, I don't know what it costs, $3 for a pack of 20 of them or something. And you just basically you know dead man the uh the shims which dead man means you bury it in the snow um and that works really well and if you break them it's no big deal because they don't cost anything and they're extremely light uh this year i might go ahead and break down and get something uh specifically made for snow tent in uh but we'll see uh Anyway, comes with six little dirt stakes, so you're going to need to provide stakes if you have a snow camp coming up. But that's the Marmot uh, Fortress UL2. Talk to you later.